<clears throat> now Taker was in WWF at the time, so they gave me a tryout, and then Vince hired me, and he goes, he goes, it's your face I have a problem with. He says, you have the body of a monster, but you have a baby face. He says, I'm not looking for baby faces. I need heels. So he says, go. They, they signed me to a contract, and they about two or three months later, they called me and said, hey, go rent the movie Live and Let Die. There's a voodoo character in it, a James Bond film. And he goes, we want to kind of take off. And Vince says, I want you to get that laugh down. This guy has a laugh that I want to get down. That <laughs> and so uh, that's where it came from, man. And we just ran with it. What do you think of like the name, Papa Shango? It's kind of a weird name. Did you like the name? Well, I picked the name. Oh, wow. Okay. Papa Why did like you pick that name? name and, and it's Shang Shango. It, the, 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 the correct pronunciation of it is Shango. But I thought that sounded too country, Papa Shango. And so I made a Shango. It just sounded cooler. But Shango is the uh, keeper of the dead. I mean, you to go through the graves, you got to go through Shango. So he was, and who was actually a guy named Baron Samadai. And that's who he is in the, in the some people say Baron Samidi, but it's Baron Samadai. And that's the guy in the movie. And uh, we just took off from that, man. I thought it was cool. But yeah, I picked the name. I remember being really cool, but like scary though. Like you're like, not sure like what's going on i mean the voodoo stuff i'm i'm i got i think i'm 12 at this point maybe 11 you know so you're st i'm still a little skeptical about what's going on you know <laughs> it was it was before its time it was before its time do you think the networks like usa whatever do you think that they were scared of it or is that why papa shango didn't have a longer shelf life uh it's a long story it had to do a lot with me and where i was in th that place and time of my life and you know it's funny with Papa Shango, like or Papa Shango, the the voodoo spells. Like obviously, you know, maybe you're not that into it, but like as a fan, it's like wow, making guys puke, the warriors puking. Like it was really interesting, though. Like as, from a fan perspective, it's like wow, who, what is this guy? Like, he's wow, putting spells on people. It was before its time, and the thing about me is, I wasn't talking to two adults. I was talking to kids. I was scaring kids, seven to twelve years, you know, kids. Yeah. I was telling you that I'd visit you and you wouldn't sleep at night. And that was my whole thing. I told Vince, let me scare kids. They're going to grow up and later on in life, they're going to be talking about me. And I told you, know, and to this day, most of the people, when I paint up as Papa Shango, I have a lot of 35, 34 to 40 year old men. They're just like, dude, you have no idea how you scared me when I was a kid. And they're telling their kid, no, you don't understand. This guy was a voodoo guy and he scared me as a kid. So, you know, it's pretty cool to be part of something. I mean, to this day, people want to know how I made the ultimate warrior throw that the throw up. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I, it's it's very humbling, you know, because it, it's just a humbling thing. That very weird color green, whatever that was that he threw up. Yeah, <laughs> like neon green. <laughs> it was bad. WrestleMania 8, though, I'll always remember that. Hogan said, you come down and interfere. I hated you forever for interfering in, in, in the Hogan match. What was that like? Was that supposed to lead to anything? Like, what was that all about as far as WrestleMania 8? Uh, I think, I I don't know, man. Like I said, at that point, I was just happy to be there. Uh, I knew that I was going to get a little run with the Warrior, but I think it was more set up to just keep the Warrior going until he got to Macho Man or something. They didn't have plans and. It really got going with Sid quick because when Sid quit, they didn't have anybody. So I kind of got thrown to the wolves. They weren't going to push it that fast. But when Sid quit, it changed everything. And they were basically looking for any heel that had any type of heat going on them. So they threw me. I kind of got thrown to the dogs on it. But, you know, business is business. And then I was going through a real bad divorce. And I went from being a nice guy to a guy they called the bear. And, uh, it was time for me to go back home for a minute. 